So if you're depressed already, <laughs> maybe we can talk about California and kind of lift our spirits a bit. But in, in the same vein as David and Ed talked about, I want to talk about the, the data reflecting where we are today in California, where we see some weaknesses from a deflating stimulus to the trade wars, not only with China, but also with Mexico, two really important uh, trading partners of California and, uh, and housing. The last time we were together, we talked a lot about weaknesses in housing in California. Uh, and the way that I want to do this is to begin by talking about logistics sec the logistics sector, uh, tourism, and housing. So these are three places where we see signs of weakness. And then uh, employment, where we don't see signs of weakness in California. So that's the good news. And then I want to talk about a project that we're working on and some of the initial results. So GDP by state arrives with a six to seven month lag. That makes it interesting from a historical point of view, but not very useful in understanding where we are and, and where we're going to go in this economy in the next couple of years. So what we've been working on is developing a contemporaneous measure of GDP. Uh, we're most of the way there. There's still more work to do, but there's some interesting initial results which do reflect on the forecast, and that'll lead us into the forecast. So. Uh, to get moving, let's talk about logistics. What you see here are two graphs, and this is trade through the ports, through West Coast ports. The top line on both of these are the large ports of San Pedro Bay. If you look at the left-hand side, that's imports, and you see that there's a trend going up, uh, but, and, and, and there are these spikes, which, you know, seasonal spikes, and then a quick bounce back. But if you move your eyes all the way over to the right, you see that that bounce back is much less than it has been before. So that's kind of a worrying sign of weakness. The bottom two are the ports of uh, San Francisco Bay, which is primarily Oakland, and the uh, Puget Sound port. So let's just look at those. They're kind of swamped by the size of the San Pedro ports. And what you see here is also a decline in, in, in recent months. So weakness in traffic through our ports, which supports logistics, so the right-hand graph here is exports, and they're kind of flat to negative. And if we blow this up uh, for the other smaller ports, but significant ports, we see the same kind of thing. So trade through our ports, you know, certainly the growth in trade through our supports has slowed down, and, and maybe absolute trade is, is slowing. It's just kind of an indication that it's only part of logistics. A big part of logistics, which we're going to talk about uh, in, in more depth today, uh, with regard to commercial real estate is this shift from retail, brick and mortar retail, to online retail. And, uh, and, and so that's the movement of packaged goods. So what's happening there for that? We look at the two airports that are really predominant with UPS and, uh, and FedEx. And so that's traffic through Ontario, which is the, uh, the red line. And, and through Oakland in Northern California, which is the blue line. And in both cases, what you see is it's flat to negative as well. So we're seeing weakness in the logistics industry. A second uh, sector that's really important in California is tourism, and especially international tourism. And uh, one way to, to get a contemporaneous measurement of that is international passenger arrivals at LAX and SFO. So that's the next graph that you're going to see. It was increasing, now it's flat. And just this week, uh, the Chinese government put out a travel advisory for Chinese tourists that coming to America is a dangerous thing to do. We have crime and all kinds of other bad things. Well, when the US government does this, we, we just blow it off if we even see it. When the Chinese government does it, it makes an impact. And that's one third of the Asian tourists that come to California. The, uh, the, the, the new trade war with Mexico, Mexico contributes one and a half million tourists a year to California. If we get a closed border, that also affects our, our tourism industry, leisure and hospitality. So this is another worrisome sign. Uh, now turning to housing. So over the past years, 2015 through 2017, we have an average uh, number of ho homes, these are single family 
uh, detached homes that are sold in California, about 420,000. Right? And that's that dashed line there. And you see it bounces around around the dashed line. But there are kind of two episodes here. It looks like one, but there are really two episodes of a decline in home sales in California. The first one here is associated with the reduction in the deduction of salt from personal income taxes uh, that came with the last ta uh, change in the US tax code. And that happened in late 2017. And that's when you see the beginning of this decline. This happened in states where you had uh, high taxes and so that salt was actually a, an important part of the decision to buy a home and how much you're willing to pay. So we get a big decline. That kind of works its way through. You get price discovery. We get back almost to that 420,000. And then we have another one, which is what David talked about. Nationwide, we've got weakness in housing. And so this can't be salt unless there's some other reason why Texas and Tennessee and so on have weak housing. This is a nationwide phenomenon, an expectation-driven phenomenon. They listen to David and, and, and Ed about uh, going into cash. And, uh, and, and so we've got a big decline. In February, it bounces back, but it doesn't bounce back uh, to the average, and now it's declining again. And we see that reflected in home prices uh, oh, but first, we're 5% uh, below our home sales a year ago. So that's as of April. In home prices, this is the Case-Shiller Home Price Index. And this is for San Francisco on the top, San Diego in the middle, Los Angeles on the bottom. They're all normalized to the 2007 peak. So each line is relative to what it was in 2007. We had a lot of appreciation, San Francisco here, 30%. Uh, higher than uh, or 130 percent of the 2007 peak and if you look over on the right hand side you see the decline that is associated with that last round of uh, uh, of a pullback in uh, in home sales recently we've seen increases in uh, in home prices so that's kind of that little upturn that you see at the end but nevertheless if you compare today's home prices on this index to where we were last summer, last August, you get a run rate of minus 2.7% in uh, San Francisco, minus 1% in San Diego, minus 1% in Los Angeles. So we've got home price declines and soft housing markets. And this has implications, has implications for the forecast, uh, and that is in home building. So what you see in this graph are uh, permits for new uh, new housing units, and since last summer, when this started, permits have dropped by 20%. Okay. So we're now building at a run rate of 95,000 homes. If you take out about 10,000 homes a year, which are replacement for the 30,000 homes we lost in the wildfires in the last two years, we're at a run rate of 85,000. We need almost 200,000 a year to keep up. So the notion that you know, these changes in uh, the regulatory uh, environment for building homes is going to allow private builders to build us out of that home affordability crisis in this cycle, uh, that, that's sort of misplaced. We're falling further and further behind, and, um, and, and so we don't have that expectation. In a moment, I'll get to our forecast for housing. Uh, but the good news is that we're at the, or in the neighborhood of full employment. So that's the red line here. It dropped down from its uh, highs up here above 6.5% uh, to 4.3%. If you look at particular regions in California, in the Bay Area going from, uh, from Marin County all the way down to Santa Clara County, under 2.5%. If you want to go down the other side of the Bay, well, it's under 3%. And in many places in, in Southern California, unemployment rates are below the US unemployment rate, uh, you would expect job growth to be slowing much more than it has. So the, the blue blocks here are the net monthly gains in non-farm payroll jobs. And David talked about this, you know, the, 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 these numbers may be revised significantly, but we're not really seeing a big drop uh, over the last couple of years in net new jobs. We've got a run rate right now of over 300,000 new jobs in California. 
but that kind of has to end because we are running out of people, as uh, David indicated, for the nation. So where are those jobs being formed? Well, kind of the surprising thing is the, the red block here is the US. This is percentage growth by region. And over on the left-hand side, you see Silicon Valley in San Francisco. San Francisco is the highest one, twice the US rate. Silicon Valley, one and a half times the US rate, in spite of very high housing prices. And, and that's really why the, you know, those prices turned up. You've got extraordinary job growth. And that's also pushing out into the kind of the outer reaches of the Bay Area. And then we've got uh, San Joaquin Valley, Sacramento, and the Delta, and the Central Coast that have all been kind of lagging in California. So that's part of you know, where the new uh, employees are coming from. And then to the right is the East Bay and, and Southern California. So you see the slowing happening in job growth in California, although the Bay Area seems to just defy gravity uh, month after month. What kinds of jobs? Uh, well, we've got a real mix. It's professional, scientific, and technical services. So that's high wage. Then the next one is healthcare and social services. That's going to be a low wage. You've got construction, durable goods manufacturing. I'm going to highlight that one because we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, and, and those are, are uh, good middle class jobs, leisure and hospitality, uh, which is low wage. And then over on the right hand side, non-durable goods, manufacturing, retail and wholesale. Those are sectors that have been losing jobs over the last year, but they've been losing jobs all throughout uh, you know, this expansion. Those are declining sectors in California. Uh, so now what I want to do, I'm going to come back to durable goods, but talk a little bit about this new GDP measure. And as I said, GDP as constructed by the Bureau of Economic Analysis in Washington comes out with a, uh, with a six month seven, or to seven month lag. So what this graph here has got uh, in constant dollars on the vertical axis and from 2014 to uh, present on the horizontal axis. And this is the published data on California GDP, increasing uh, as we've increased employment. And, uh, and that's what we want to use as our base to try and create a new measure, a monthly measure of GDP. And one of the things that we use as an input is employment. So employment numbers come out a few weeks after the end of the month. We're going to be able to construct a monthly GDP and then make a comment on that. And we'll have that on our website each month as to what's happening with economic growth in California in addition to employment. So when we construct uh, our monthly GDP, it's that blue line. And, and there's, you know, there's some jumps in that. That's part of what we're working on, which is the, the uh, smoothing out of what's happening with productivity quarter to quarter. Uh, but basically, we get a very good fit with a relatively simple way of calculating monthly GDP. And just to show you some of the things we can do with this is in 2018, fourth quarter, we estimated that GDP is 2.3%. And uh, the BEA just came out with the numbers uh, we missed by 1 tenth of a percent. It's 2.2. Uh, first quarter of 2019, well, we don't know what that is, but it came out at 3.1 by our measure, which means that California is growing at about the same rate as the U.S. So that's a little slower than we've been growing, uh, but still is, is good, significant growth and is consistent with our employment growth. And a, the April numbers came out, and there's a lot of kind of variation month to month in the employment numbers. So if you look at February, March, and April, the three-month average, still at a 3.1 rate. And April is actually much better than the earlier two months. So California's economy is doing well. Job growth is doing well. But we've got signs of weakness. Now, one of the things that we can do with this, let me digress on this, and then we'll get to the forecast, is we can look at what's happening sector by sector. And this is durable goods manufacturing. That's the one that I highlighted we had some job growth in there. The, the orange line here is number of jobs. And the blue line is output. Now, it's sort of a common narrative that manufacturing's left California. The blue line is manufacturing in California. It is not left. But employment is growing much, uh, much slower. So let me show you with just some numbers here. On an annual basis from 2010, 
California manufacturing has been growing at a 6% rate. So that's astonishing, right? But employment only growing at a little over 1%. What that means is we're building goods with robots. And what it also means, which is you know, kind of really important for workforce development in California, we're not hiring the same kind of people in this manufacturing. That 1% per year, those are people who know how to work with robots. People who are technically sophisticated and, and not metal benders or, or riveters, but people who are running Rosie the, Rivet, Rosie the Riveter robot, not Rosie the Riveter herself, right? So this is a real change. And this is one of the things that we can do with this uh, monthly GDP. So more on that uh, as we go forward. Uh, but that brings us to the implications for the forecast. We have signs of weakness in trade, in tourism, and in housing. But we also have signs of strength in employment and the way in which employment is shifting into other sectors and in GDP growth. Uh, but it must slow because we are running out of people, the Bay Area notwithstanding. Uh, but we also have some risk. Trade wars are a major risk to the forecast. Uh, as, as David talked about, and it's a risk to these sectors uh, that we just discussed. And tepid residential construction is also a risk to the forecast. And then finally, our GDP measures are, are going to provide us with an update as we go month to month between the quarterly conferences that we have here. So that brings us to the forecast. And the forecast for payroll employment, 1.4% this year, slowing to 0.6% in 2021. And we'll have a dip. In, in that 2020 period uh, where, you know, that David described as a real slow period of economic growth in the US. Uh, unemployment rate on average is going to stay in the neighborhood of full employment, although it'll elevate and then come back down. Uh, personal income growth is still going to be quite good at or above the US level because of the kinds of activity that we have here in California. And then this is, I think, the weakest part of the forecast. We have ourselves, we have our forecast coming up to 118,000 uh, units this year of new housing. So that's single family as well as multifamily. Uh, we're, you know, we're building it at a 95,000 rate. So that's, that's a long ways to go, and we might not get there. But then we have, and, and this is where the changes in, in home building regulations start to come into effect as we move forward particularly as we get better economic growth in 2021, moving up into about 142,000 uh, 142, units. So that concludes the California forecast. Thank you. And 